Good morning everyone and today we are going to look at how to do short answers question in the chance and data 2019 exam. I have a lot of requests to do this paper and I'll try my best to do it as accurately and as quick as possible. Good luck and we let's go and attempt then. Okay, question one is about multivariate analysis. This is the box plot also called the box and whiskers. So the question say, uh, this is the Australian and this is the New Zealand and these are all the data here. The first question asks you, what is the interquartile range cap gain by Australian? So Australian is on the top, so we look at the Australian data. So to know how to calculate the interquartile range, you need to know the formula interquartile range is upper quartile minus lower quartile. Look at the upper quartile is 94 and lower quartile is 67. So 94 minus 67 will give you 27 and that will give you a simple achieve. Let's carry on. Next question is, okay, we have to bring down the graph, okay? So using the graph, the same graph, okay? What is the greatest variation, okay? They ask you, you need to find what is the greatest variation. Variation is made up of two things. It's also called the spread. It could be either the range or the interquartile range. The range, the formula for range is max minus minimum and the interquartile range is upper quartile minus lower quartile. So we calculate the range for Australia and New Zealand first. So first we go to Australia. The maximum number is maximum is 129 and the minimum is 55. So 129 minus 55 will give you a range of 74. And for New Zealand, the maximum is 148 and the minimum is 55 and you minus them, the max minus mean will give you 93. So from here, you can see that New Zealand has a bigger range and the bigger range is by 19 points. So in, in chance and data, you need to describe the data so that you have numbers to back up your claim. Okay, the next one is the interquartile range. The interquartile range is similar. So the interquartile range, you have to calculate the formula upper quartile minus lower quartile. So for Australia, okay, for Australia, the upper quartile is 94 and the lower quartile is 67. That's why you minus them. The, in, the interquartile range for Australia is going to be 27. For the New Zealand, the upper quartile is 82 and the lower quartile is 60. So the interquartile range is going to be 22. So from there, we can see that Australia has a bigger interquartile range, 27 versus 22. So if you know in, in chance and data, interquartile range is more important than range. So if you answer the interquartile range, you will get married for that question. Okay, we will proceed now. Okay, I prepared all this so that we can uh, go through pretty quickly rather than me writing down, okay? So they say, describe the significant features of the distribution of cap for both Australia and New Zealand player. So we look at the graph again, okay? So we look, the first, we look at the shape. The dot is called a dot plot. And from the shape, you can see that it's not very symmetrical for both of them. It's more likely it is skewed to the right. Skewed to the right means it's going to form this way, okay? So the way it falls, to the right, so it is called skewed to the right. Shift. Shift, we are looking at a box here. As you can see, the Australian box is more to the right than the New Zealand box. So we say the Australian uh, interquartile range is shifted more to the right. And the last but not least, we talk about the center. The center is both the mean and the median. Okay, the mean and the median, we can see from the graph, Australia has a bigger mean and median. So from here, from the graph, the mean is 81 for Australia. New Zealand is 75. The me median for Australia is 80. New Zealand is 66. So both cases, both the mean and median is bigger for Australia. So we can claim that Australia has a bigger center than New Zealand. 
Okay, we shall carry on now. Okay, now we have the next one. A journalist claim that New Zealand players has more caps than New Zealand than Australian. Sorry, can you comment on the claim based on the graph provided? Okay, so we can make a few claim. We can claim that it is not right. First, the New Zealand we said before New Zealand median is smaller than Australian median, sixty six against eighty. Similarly. New Zealand players have a lower mean than Australian players, seventy five point one three eight versus eighty one point five three eight five four eight. The interquartile range, you can see that Australian interquartile range here is more shifted to the right than New Zealand, so we cannot claim that New Zealand has a bigger, more caps than Australian. And last but not least, if you look at the median here, that's the Australian median, that is eighty. 80 okay and uh, this is the 50 percent mark and the upper quartile range for the new zealand which is a 75 percent mark is 82 so they are quite similar so 50 percent of australian is quite similar to 75 percent of new zealanders so we say that the median and the upper quartile is about the same so we cannot claim that new zealand has larger more caps than australian players great now we're going to do uh, probability, uh, chance, and data. So this is the chance, okay? So when you have a, a table, the first thing you do, you have to put the total, the row total, as well as the column total. I've done it. So when you add them up on the row, you get 105. The other row is 195. Rugby column is 90. Netball, 90. Cricket is 40. And football is 80. So the question asks you, based on the figure, what is the probability that a player who suffered a minor injury played rugby? So the rugby is 90 out of the total of 300. So 90 or 300, put in your calculator, is 0 0.3. Next question. Based on this figure, which sport has a chance that one of its male players suffers a minor injury? So we are looking at male. So for rugby, it's 70 out of 90. So 0 0.777. For netball, is 30 out of 90, so 0 0.333. Cricket is 25 out of 40, 0 0.625. And football, 70 out of 80. They will give you 0 0.875. So among the probability, the highest will be football. So the answer is football. And that will give you a merit in this question. Okay, we will go on to... We will go on to question 2. Question 2 is... Uh, what we call a uh, scatter graph. Okay, so the first thing you do, they ask you to draw a line of best fit. So you can draw a curve, you can draw a straight line. Any one of them will be fine. So I decided to draw a straight line, so I name it the line of best fit. Okay, so the question asks you, comment on the appropriateness of the line of best fit. Okay, so it looks okay, uh, even though it is not the best line or best fit okay so i draw a straight line a linear line caution must be taken though most of the data are here okay so below seven there's a lot of data but after seven years there's fewer data so that's what is the caution you need to take note of okay okay next one describe and interpret two features that visible in a graph with the number of caps for players representing New Zealand and Fiji. So okay, we'll go back to the graph, okay? So if you look at the graph here, okay? So if you look at the graph, we can see that there's a cluster within 0 to 2, 2 to 3.5 around here, or 3 to 3.5, I reckon it's 3 to 3.5, and then we have another cluster from 5, to 7.5 so there's a big cluster here and then we shall look at some interesting data this data here the three data they are unusual and interesting so we need to investigate further whether that is true and last but not least is that a good prediction to make uh, I would say it's good below 7 but after 7 we have to be cautious about when how to make a prediction based on the line of best fit okay Okay, so the next question is, how useful is the graph awarded to an international rugby player based on the years they played for their country? So 
So I would say it is not very useful. First thing, you cannot infer all international players because the data we are given is only for New Zealand and Fijian players. The graph is quite weak, moderate, linear graph. So I wouldn't, the so prediction can be quite risky. And last but not least, there's few data after seven years. So you want to make any prediction for more than seven years, it is, can be quite unreliable. Okay, we shall proceed now. Okay. Next question. Okay, straightforward. Okay, they give you, these are all different color coded, but because I, I have, do, do not have a color printer, we shall assume that the first one is loose forward, the second one is half back and so forth. So the question is, what is the position in the Australian? So Australian at the top, New Zealand at the bottom, with the most players. So you look at the biggest number. The biggest number is 12. 12 correspond to loose forward. So you say loose forward is the most players and there are 12 and you get an achieve for that. Simple, isn't it? Okay, good. Now we shall look at the next question. What are the ways? Okay, so there are two, there are many ways to interpret that data. One way to use a pie graph, but in pie graph, you can only get percentage you can get a proportion based on the percentage you don't see the total so that is the drawback about a pie graph the other graph is a bar graph you can draw a bar graph and you can put a different position for different uh, sport so if you look at the height the, the the good to compare by looking at the height of each position but the the height from the data given could be quite close so the it's quite difficult to distinguish who has a higher height than the other so that will give you an excellent if you can say that in your external okay last but not least we shall look at question three this is the next topic is called the time series so they ask you in what year the new zealand team scored the least so maybe around here uh halfway between 1970 and 1980 the point scored is around 25 point or 50 points so that will give you a simple achieve. Next point. Okay. Describe the trend. So when you do a time series graph, you are looking at the trend. Okay. The long term trend is increasing. If you look at the graph again. Okay. The graph. Okay. So the trend is increasing over time. Okay. And then it range from 25 or 50 up to as high as possible. Okay. And then the patterns are quite regular. It's up and down all the time. So it's called the peak and the throw. Okay. And there was a huge spike in 2005. And that's interesting. You need to find, uh, it's interesting to know, find out why. So that's what we're going to do. And that will give you an excellence. Okay. So again, chance and data is something you need to uh, justify and give your reason. The more reason, one reason is achieved, two reasons is merit, three or more reasons will give you an excellence. Okay, the last question is a table again, a repeated question from question one or two. So the first thing you do, find the row total 46 and 64, and then the column total 34, 40 and 36. The next question is asking you, what is the probability that a randomly selected player Australian and age 26 and 30, so Australian 26 and 30, 16 out of the total 110, and 0 0.1455 that will give you a simple achieve next question what is the probability that a randomly selected player from new zealand was aged between 21 and 25 so you are looking only at new zealand players they are between 21 and 25 so it'll be 20 out of 64 and that will give you a simple merit not too bad isn't it yes good next question next question is what is the probability that the player chosen was Australian and aged between 21 and 25 or a New Zealander aged between 26 and 30? So the word all in mathematics means you add. So you find the probability Australian aged between 21 and 25. So 21 and 25 is 14 out of 110. New Zealander between 26 and 30 is 24 out of 110. You add the two probability, put in your calculator and the answer is going to be 0.3455 that's a simple question and last but not least is the question on without replacement so if you two players are chosen so what are the probability that the both players are new zealand between 21 and 25 so you calculate the first probability of between 21 and 25 new zealander 21 25 is going to be 20 of 110 
So if one player had been taken out, it becomes 109. So the next player is going to be 19 over 109. You multiply them together and that will give you an answer. And that will give you a very simple excellence question. So if they say three players, what are you going to do? You're going to be times 18 divided by 108. So gentlemen, that is complete all the question on chart and data. So hopefully you guys do your best. And this is perhaps one of the easiest external. So good luck and all the best in your exams coming soon. See you soon and ciao.